I didn't know quite what to expect with the color purple. I'm not familiar with the source material, and I, I'm sorry to say I've never seen the 1985 film, although I do know that it is a tradition for many, especially in the black community. Uh, you know, when I, there was a, um, uh, an interview with the screenwriter after my award screening, and so many people in the audience uh, and, you know, the people up on stage talked about how their families watch The Color Purple every year. So high bar for this film. But I went in without any expectations. In fact, I went to the awards screening at Warner Brothers headquarters here in New York City, not only because I'm a Critics' Choice member, but because a friend of mine, who, who's also white like myself, she thought the trailer looked really good. And when I told her I had an invite to this screening, she was like, oh, we got to go. And I was allowed to bring a guest. So we went and the awards screening was packed, packed. I would say about 80% of the audience was, was black. I hope that a lot of people go and see this movie because it's truly incredible. Uh, and, but it was a really hot ticket, very hot ticket. People were searching for seats. It was, there was energy before the movie even started. Uh, and as I said, uh, screenwriter Marcus Gardley was going to do an interview afterwards. Uh, well, the lights went down. And I gotta say, from the opening scene, I was blown away. I was like, wow, this is incredible. Uh, and I want everyone to experience it. At first, I was blown away because of the opening musical number. Like I knew there would be singing in the film, that this was an adaptation of the Broadway musical uh, of The Color Purple, but I had no idea that it would be a full-on musical with elaborate choreographed dance numbers. I mean, it's incredible. Fantastic musical dance numbers. As I've been saying, this and Wonka are two spectacular musicals, both from Warner Brothers Discovery, by the way. Uh, Wonka is my fourth favorite film of the year, and The Color Purple is my second favorite film of the year, right after Barbie. Great year for Warner Brothers Discovery. Uh, all of these films, though, by the way, from the previous administration who uh, ran Warner Brothers films. But really, I think the color purple has to be seen to be believed. You really just to have you really just have to go on faith because it's hard to describe just how incredible it is because a lot of it's emotional. It's a feeling that you have where you're just in awe. But I'm going to try. All right, so the movie as I said is powerful, not just visually but emotionally. And one of the things that I thought was the most interesting about it and that I felt was unusual for me was to see such pain and despair hand in hand with joy and celebration. I was like, how can these two things coexist? Yet I thought about it and thought about it after watching the movie, and I'm like, that's exactly the point. That's how the characters in this story were able to survive and to go on despite the hardships that they were presented with. And I thought that was not only very powerful and moving, but inspirational. Uh, if you're not a member of the black community, I think it's so important to go into the color purple with an open mind and heart and to realize that this movie isn't going to reflect you and you should not compare it to your own experiences and expectations. You should really be open to what the movie is trying to say and experience something that, has, you know, a different, a different way of a different part of life. And I wish, and you know, it's, it's interesting to me because I think we've been having this conversation a lot of, in other areas, like for instance, politics, where you have people making laws for all different kinds of groups, you know, different ethnicities, you know, in terms of gender, sexuality, and they're applying, the people making the rules are applying their own experiences to something that they have, they couldn't possibly and never have experienced and don't understand the background and the nuance and all of those elements. And so I hope that movies like this open people's eyes to just how little they know about someone else's journey. Uh, you know, they've often, you know, actors say that their job is to walk in someone else's shoes. And there's the old saying that you don't really know someone until you've walked a mile in their shoes. And I think in society, we've lost that. There's too many assumptions being made. And this, in my opinion, is the power of film, that this movie, The Color Purple, uh, you know, this, this version of it, uh, which I think is just phenomenal, allows you to walk in the shoes of these characters very, very effectively. Uh, so let's start with direct, and I'd be curious about your, your feelings about film and how it broadens horizons, etc. So let's start with director Blitz Bazawul, who this is his first, you know, first major feature. He did one smaller feature before, uh, but he did direct some of the sequences in Beyonce's Blackest King, which you might recall I thought was very, very good. 
but I'm shocked that he isn't getting more attention for best director. I nominated him when I was doing my nominating uh, voting for Critics' Choice. We vote in two rounds for Critics' Choice because this musical has so many different moving parts, which are so masterfully orchestrated. That's, and that's all Bazawool. I mean, when you see this, you'll be like, wow, I can't believe he pulled it all together so well. That someone with, this, with his lack of feature film experience could do such a good job handling the narrative, the, you know, the story aspects of the film also deserves major kudos. I mean, it's just so nailed down. It's so well done. Uh, you know, it's not abstract, you know, it's not elusive. It's, you know, it's just like, it's really great. You know, it's, it's in some ways very good old fashioned Hollywood storytelling. You know, the kind of things that made ho people fall in love with Hollywood in the first place. Uh, but, you know, it's very modern in that I think it's more honest and raw uh, and more coming from that perspective. You know, Steven Spielberg directed the first Color Purple movie and uh, Oprah starred as Sophia, uh, the role that Danielle Brooks plays here. And they're both, you know, uh, Oprah and Spielberg are both producers on this, uh, this musical version of the, of the, of the story. Uh, but, uh, and, and so speaking of that, the musical numbers here are just so darn good that it makes sense considering his background working with Beyonce because the musical numbers come across like the best all time music videos from Beyonce, Michael Jackson, and more. The production design, the costume design paired with really inventive camera work and choreography. I mean, it just makes the film an absolute delight and overflowing with energy. It just reaches out of the mo out of the screen and grabs you. This is an A-plus production, in my opinion, up there with the best musicals that Hollywood has ever produced. Not a single corner was cut. So good. I'm surprised, I mean, I hope that maybe Warner Brothers is just hoping it's gonna explode. But I'm like, why aren't you telling people about this amazing movie that you have? Uh, I mean, for weeks I've been like, can I review it? Can I review it? Can I review it? And they're finally letting us review it. Now, as those of you familiar with the story already know, The Color Purple deals with some very difficult and adult subject matters, ripped, unfortunately, from the lives of too many. The film handles them all very tastefully. It goes just far enough to not undercut them, to make sure you not only know what's going on, but the severity of it. Uh, but I, then again, and then it, it, you know, it cuts away. And since these issues do come from real life, they should be depicted so that they can be discussed. You know, you don't want to hide these things. And so I feel that the film handles them appropriately and the PG-13 rating is correct. Uh, if you're, you know, you know your child best, uh, maybe you want to see the film first, but trust that PG-13 rating. On that note, also the movie is about forgiveness. This was also something that I thought about a lot after watching the movie and I thought, you know, it really moved me and I learned a lot from it. Like I, when I watched the film, I was like, how could anyone forgive some of the things that happen in this movie? It baffled me. I was like, that's unforgivable. But again, I thought about it. And I believe that that is another point that the film is making. And the movie underscores that forgiveness is often not so much about the person being forgiven, but about the person doing the forgiving. And that, that, allow, that the forgiveness is for their benefit so that they can move on with their lives and not be consumed by hate and anger about what happened to them. And that, I think, is really interesting. And I think if you don't understand that, you're lucky that you don't have to understand that. And I think, you know, again, that speaks to our larger situation with politics and everything like that. And I thought it was incredible. And I think it could be helpful, you know, for some of the things like you, it's much smaller, obviously, or hopefully, that you might be holding on to. And this movie might inspire you to forgive. And to anyone questioning if The Color Purple really needed to be made into a musical, I saw a couple of you saying that, uh, and I've seen that general discourse online a little bit. Well, once you see it, you'll be like, ah, oh, I can't imagine it any other way. I mean, it also, it won, it won the Tony, uh, the Revival did, it won the Drama League Award, and it also got a Grammy. So it's, you know, there's a lot of people, a lot of organizations, respected organizations, vouching for just how good this adaptation of the original story is. Uh, they, you know, they talked about it after the movie that they were able to go a lot further. This is more faithful to the original book, where in 1985, when Spielberg made the movie, there were things they just weren't willing to depict, uh, which, you know, that was the time, but I'm glad that this new version exists. The acting across the board is phenomenal. So I'm going to go through the actors in order of my favorite, although they're all incredible. I have to start with Danielle Brooks. Many of you, of course, know her from Orange is the New Black, 
but she played the role of Sophia. Again, this was the Oprah Winfrey role in the original 1985 movie, but uh, uh, Brooks played the role in the Broadway revival, and she was Tony nominated. And I think she's going to be Oscar nominated too, because she is a bolt of lightning in this movie. I don't think the movie would have the fun factor that it does without Brooks's performance. Yet at the same time, she is asked to go to some deep dramatic places, and she does that extraordinarily well too. Next, I got to go with Fantasia Barino from American Idol. What a journey. But, you know, you would never guess she came from a reality show. She is the heart. And that just goes to show the good that some reality shows do. And, that they, you know, it's very hard to break into Hollywood. It's, it's open. <clears throat> People can do it. But it's tough. It's really, really tough. So the more paths into it, the better. And Fantasia Barino is incredible. She is the heart of the movie. And to her credit, while many actresses have played Seeley, I can't imagine anyone else in the role after watching Fantasia. It is a raw, egoless performance. You know, what she's willing to, to portray and how, how pure and honest she is about it is incredible. It's perfect. It's a perfect performance. Then, Coleman Domingo. I am in awe that anyone could play someone so despicable. Wow, but I understand that it's necessary to go here because you can't appreciate the heroics of survivors if you don't understand what they survived. And boy, is Mr. someone to survive. And Domingo goes for it. To his credit, his Mr. is a nuanced character. I can't believe uh, you know Danny Glover played this role. I'm like, Danny Glover? Uh, part of me wants to go back and watch the original movie, but I think it would be, you know, now I'm so, I, I so love it, this version with the music and everything. Uh, there, there, there's one cameo that I think if you're a fan of the 1985 film, it, you'll be really happy to see it. But anyway, um, he, his mister is a very nuanced character. So his journey through the film is believable. I thought, you know, he's, he's one half of a very unfortunate equation and he does a great job. Taraji P. Henson is fantastic as Shug Avery, a really great character. Ah, so many, so good, such a great character. I love this this this, this creation in the movie. Uh, and you know, Henson really delivers with her big musical number. That was, I loved that. But I could see other actresses still in the role. I don't think Henson owned it. Uh, and Corey Hawkins, ah, oh, he's great. I just saw him in The Last Voyage of the Demeter. You know, I'm glad that he's, you know, chugging along with his career. He's, you know, I don't think, you know, unfortunately, Straight Outta Compton wasn't the breakout that he deserved, but he's still going, and I think he's getting some great roles. He was great here. He does a fantastic job bringing a different kind of male energy to the film, and it turns out he's a great singer and dancer, so I loved him here. Uh, Felicia Pearl Mposse and Halle Bailey as the younger version of sisters uh, Celia and Nettie are, are both excellent as well. And they make a strong impression despite their smaller roles. They do have small roles. I know some of you are big Halle Bailey fans, myself included, and you're excited to see her in this movie, but her role is small. Uh, Louis Gossett Jr., David Allen Greer, Ciara, and John Batiste, he was fantastic. They all have very effective cameos. Uh, finally, I did get to hear Marcus Gardley speak at the end, as I said, and to hear his love for the color purple was something wonderful to behold. He said, this was interesting, he said that when he first interviewed to write the screenplay for this adaptation, he was such a fan and he really wanted the gig. He was told, sorry, we're looking for a female writer because of the subject matter. But he persisted, he didn't give up. And he said he pitched like something like 13 times to get this gig, and in the end, Oprah said with tears in her eyes from his last pitch that the gig was his. And I'm so glad they went with him. He did an incredible job, not only honoring the 1985 film, but also the original book and his community. I mean, it's just incredible. And I think it's really important. I'm so glad that the diversity of voices in Hollywood is changing. But that doesn't mean that you have to be restricted to only telling your own demographic story. I think that you know, you know, I'm glad they went through such a rigorous interview process. And in the end, they realized that the most important element is passion. And Marcus Gardley has so much passion for The Color Purple. You can see that everybody who made this movie has passion for the material. The movie is dripping with passion. And I really, truly hope that everyone goes to see it. All right, so The Color Purple hits theaters on Christmas Day. And it is just an incredible experience. That's my review. Share your thoughts down below. Subscribe today. And of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.